Reading consists essentially in connecting, uh, creating an interface between vision and the language system, the spoken language system. When the child comes to uh, the reading school, it already has a very sophisticated spoken language system. It already has a very sophisticated visual system, but it needs to create this interface, this visual word form area, this brain's letterbox, and to connect it appropriately. And in doing so, it needs also to change some of these target systems. How does this work exactly? We've conducted a large number of studies, and many other labs in the world have conducted many studies that look at what has been changed in the brain of children or adults after they've learned to read. And uh, in particular, I want to mention here a study that we did very recently, which was published in the journal Science, where thanks to a large international collaboration, we uh, were able to scan illiterate and literate subjects of various levels of literacy in Brazil as well as in Portugal, bringing them to our lab in France. Um, thanks to this experiment, we managed to make a complete map of the areas that have been changed by learning to read. And as all of you in this room know how to read, you can consider that your brain has been dramatically changed. Um, so I've told you about these areas for language. The first major change that we see in the literate brain is this letterbox area coming active only in people who have learned to read. It will activate in direct proportion to the reading score, and it will activate to the letters that you know. It will not activate, for instance, to Chinese if you don't know Chinese. So it has learned the shapes of the letters. It is accompanied by major change in the visual cortex, in your, in your early visual areas, which is generic and serves for all sorts of visual tasks, you have changed the precision of the coding in your visual cortex because you've learned to read. But most importantly, you have also changed your representation of speech sounds. If you've learned an alphabetic language, you have changed the way your cortex codes the phonemes of speech, the elementary uh, components of speech. And learning to read is to a large extent the capacity to attend to the individual phonemes of speech and to attribute them different letters. When we see this map, of course, we could think that the connection between these areas must, must also be changed. And I'm happy to say that with new methods for identifying the connections of the human brain, we can also track these changes. We can see, even in a living person, all of these fiber tracks that connect different brain areas. We can see their microstructure. And what we see is that, indeed, this particular connection uh, bundle which exists in all brains is reinforced and is being changed in people who have learned to read. And there is a good likelihood that this bundle is involved in connecting the letters to the sounds bidirectionally. When you hear a sound, you can also think about these letters. Um, this change is subtle, but it is an anatomical change. So the anatomy of the brain is also changed because uh, children learn to read. We make these essential changes that, of course, create a whole new modality of input of language. Another thing that we understand a little bit better now is this very classical question of phonics versus whole word training. Uh, you know there's been a lot of debate in psychology and in education. Should we teach the whole word level or should we really teach every uh, single letter and their pronunciation? Um, is there anything such as the global shape of the word which is being used in reading? Well, um, here there is something very important. As adults, we have forgotten how we were as children. We have forgotten how difficult it was to learn to read, and we think that we can just lay our eyes on a word and it immediately pops to mind. And uh, indeed, there is this notion of parallel reading. We read all of the letters at the same time. This gives us an illusion of whole word reading. But in fact, if we look at the brain, the brain still processes every single letter and does not look at the whole shape. So whole word reading is a myth, basically. All, what we have is letter processing, but letter processing in parallel across all, the, all of the letters of the word. The brain does not use the global word shape. Um, and in fact, in children, it's even worse. Children require more and more time for more and more letters. You can see this on this graph. This is the number of letters in a word the reaction time of the children. And in first grade, they are very, very slow, and they need more and more time for each letter. So this is not at all whole word reading. It's slow, serial, one letter at a time. And as children progress, second grade, third grade, this goes away and gives this illusion of whole word reading.
So I think we can be very clear on this point because there is a strong convergence with educational research uh, to suggest that the brain has nothing to do with this sort of exercises that my child had of picking up the ascender and descender letters and deciding that this corresponds to this word. The global shape is not used. Uh, we understand now a lot about reading and we understand that in all cultures, there is not so much variability. We always have the same brain mechanisms. Reading always requires specializing the visual system for the shape of letters and connecting them to speech sounds, even in Chinese, by the way. There are no letters, but they are characters, and some of them map statistically to the sound. Teaching letter to sound correspondences is therefore essential. It's one of the main pathways which is being transformed in the brain. Brain research converges with educational research Teaching of letter to sound correspondences is the fastest way to acquire reading and comprehension, not just you know, uh, being able to decode the words. Um, how does this work? Because it works because there is a form of self-teaching. Once the correspondences are learned, um, children have this correspondence between letters and sounds, then they can recognize the words auditorily using their auditory lexicon, and then this more direct route between letters and meaning can be trained. It can be self-trained as the child reads by himself, even without a teacher. So uh, this notion of two routes of reading play a very essential role in all contemporary models of the reading process. Uh, I ask you about the, uh, um, do the environmental uh, factors and cultural factors affect the way that children learn language or uh, all uh, all are the same. All children all over the world are the same to learn. Uh, that's a very nice question. Uh, we think that the brain mechanisms are very universal. Uh, children have the same basic layout of the brain circuits. But you mentioned culture and the environment, and this is an essential component. Uh, children, the predictors of uh, learning to read in young children are how well they are in phonics, this understanding of the sound systems of language, and also what is the size of their vocabulary, spoken vocabulary. If they know a large number of words, they will learn to read faster. So these, again, these are cultural factors that can be improved. And for instance, they are very simple things, but uh, uh, parents from low socioeconomic families sometimes need to be told that they need to speak to their children that they must have this systematic interaction which will enrich their children's language system and prepare them for reading. So I think we can help reading way in advance, even if we keep reading at the age of six or seven, preparing children to learn to read at the age of three, four, five by enhancing their vocabulary and their sound system of language. Thank you. I just want to know that there is a debate on language and education, especially for the children who are from grade one to grade three, that we suggest that the mother tongue should be the language of instructions with the other languages. Mm. Do you have any, uh, can you su suggest us what, wh how many languages a child can learn till grade, like year eight or 10? Mm. Uh, thank you. Um, First of all, I want to say that the speed of learning um, is uh, not something so easy to determine because it varies depending on the language. And there, there, there is beautiful research showing that Italian, for instance, can be learned in three months because it's a completely regular system. Every letter corresponds to a sound. English is probably the world's worst alphabetic language. I'm sorry to say that's the one we choose uh, because there are many irregularities and it is known that children will need two more years to achieve the same level as in Italian or in other regular languages. So, but typically even in English after three years of training in grade three, uh, children should be readers and there is no reason for a pedagogy not to achieve success in reading in one year for regular languages. Uh, I was in Brazil recently, and they say that they wanted to have training to read in three years. And I kept telling them, no, in your language it should be three months, or maybe six months, or one year, but not more. Um, at that age, you can learn to read in other languages, which was your original question. Languages will combine into the same areas, and we don't exactly know what's happening in bilinguals for the moment, but we see no cost. There seem to be rather savings. When you've already learned one language, you can read the second one faster. Uh, 